Hi, welcome to Mercurius Being. I'm Amy and I'm here to guide you through the energies of the Capricorn New Moon. The New Moon will be exact on um, Sunday, January 2nd at 12.33 p.m. That's Central Time. And um, the New Moon's occurring at 12 degrees Capricorn, 20 minutes. Um, so Capricorn energy is all about foundations. Um, it's about discipline and determination and um, just doing the work necessary to, um, to get the job done. Um, that doesn't sound very glamorous, but it is very foundational energy. And at this time of year, um, it is the beginning of the new year. Um, really, the solstice was astrologically, but this is also just another, um, I would say, a little... Um, hash mark in the new beginnings category of the year. So aside from the calendar aspect of this all, really energetically, the solstice and then the Capricorn new moon are really the beginnings of the new year. So we're setting our intentions for the new year. We're deciding what is old and outworn, what doesn't function very well. Um, how can we improve that and make something more um, in line with where you want to be and what you want to build for the future. Um, so at this new moon, um, Uranus is trining the sun and the moon, and uh, trine is a harmonious aspect. It's a nice flow. Uranus is all about um, innovation and inspiration and energy <laughs> and prana and um, the flow of energy. Um, it's connecting to the unseen energetic possibilities. Uh, Uranus shakes things up, it breaks up stagnation. So Saturn, the ruler of Capricorn, you know, is that, that foundational aspect and um, structures need to be changed. And so the Saturn cycle, this is a little digression, but the Saturn cycle is in every seven year um, cycle. And at those times, at those junctures, we have the opportunity to break up existing structures. So Uranus um, also breaks up structures and it does so, um, sometimes unsettlingly so. Um, it just forces you out of your comfort zone, it shakes things up, but because this is a trine, it's really having a nice aspect and really supporting change and restructuring and shaking things up. So it's instead of a square, which might really be that energy of forced change, like the tower card, um, this is more like, um, just a whole slew of opportunities and, and um, possibilities. So, but it, again, it's more of an energetic level, so it could be a little sharp insight, a sudden insight, um, just an opportunity that's there for you. All right, um, another big aspect of this new moon is Chiron in Aries squaring it. So as I talked about the trine being a harmonious flowing aspect, the square is more of a, a conflict, like it's, it's gonna push you a little bit. So Chiron is the wounded healer. In the sign of Aries, it's really about finding and connecting to your navel chakra, the third chakra, the will, um, the um, fire. Um, so I kind of thought of this as like the kind of lighting the flame. So if the sun and moon are in this foundational sign of Capricorn and starting your intentions and building upon that, Chiron is the spark in Aries to move forward. And it's necessary, Chiron being the wounded healer, is addressing any areas that might need to be healed or are coming up to be healed at this time. Um, Aries is a raw, initiating, individualistic sign. It's really about aliveness. Um, it's feeling the fear, but doing it anyway. Um, so Aries always has that kind of fearlessness energy, but it isn't because they don't feel fear, but they just are compelled to go forward. It's, it's the first sign of the zodiac. It's coming into this modulating um, experience of energet, energy and energetic um, life here, embodied energetic um, life. Um, so Capricorn being the foundation, what popped into my head is the Beastie Boys, what you, what you, what you want, what you want, right? It's just pushing that right now. But like in Aries, the Chiron, like what do you really want? So Saturn and Capricorn can be a little, the tradition um, of, uh, or the known um, kind of the societally accepted foundation. 
And if there has been, and there may not have been, any wounding um, surrounding what you want, um, that could be coming up right now. So again, it's really like the intention and taking the step and laying the bricks, but really through the lens of, you know, what do you want, you know? Um, Supporting that energy is Pluto conjuncting Mercury and Venus. And Pluto and Venus are in Capricorn. I guess I could just feel it. see how this looks. And um, Mercury is in Aquarius. Pluto's right in between, not quite at the midpoint. Um, so that Pluto aspect to this what you want situation is like honesty. Like honestly, what do you want? Um, and then the line from that song, um, you think you, that you confront when revelation comes. So there's, there's no fronting at this time. And whether you want to or not, with Pluto, you can't front. It's not even possible. <laughs> um, or if you do, it's just, it's just wrong, wrong, wrong. Um, and by wrong, I'm talking about avoidance and a negation of what's really alive in you. So... Again, it's not doing it wrong, but it just feels wrong. You know how something that just goes on too long, it's not working anymore. Um, those Saturn foundations, perhaps. Pluto, especially with Mercury, the god of communication, and Venus, the god of your heart and values and your self-worth. Um, it's just like you're denying you know, like who you are and, and denying the primal, deep truth of who you are. Um, it, it's just giving you that little, um, it's a nudge, right? It's a big nudge. Um, so there's never anything wrong, but like I said, you know it's wrong for you when it feels really wrong and it feels, it just feels like it's a denial of who you are. Okay, um, so with Mercury, like super honest communication, and conversation and this could be that um, a little chat time turns into like a two-hour NVC session where like man like you're going you're going in there you're really like digging <laughs> you're excavating okay and then Pluto conjunct Venus and it just had its third um, exact conjunct on Christmas Day um, like it's like any cracks in relationships um, feel like chasms, okay? But this is all um, internally. So externally, it doesn't look like anything's different, but internally, um, I'm reading my notes here because I, I really probably should have just written this out. Um, it's like the landscape has become um, like magmatic, um, like hot, melted rock, like magma shifting and pushing out and melting all of the old land foundations, so all of your old foundations. So like, you know, any fissures are being forced open by evolving and um, internal geography is all just kind of being melted and reformed. Um, Mercury uh, is going to be going retrograde in a couple weeks, January 14th, but on the 17th, <clears throat> it'll reach max evening elongation. And that's the beginning of the um, retrograde cycle. <clears throat> so we're going in at that time. And every time Mercury goes uh, retrograde, it's, it's going below and we're digging underneath to see what's needing to be re-evaluated um, and purged and making room for the new and that sense of aliveness, right? So reconnecting with that aliveness. Venus is retrograde until the end of January. <clears throat> And in Capricorn, restructuring relationships, values, and self-worth, um, and how that plays out in your relationships. Old and past relationships might be coming up also to review um, past actions. Um, so meeting up these two with Pluto, <clears throat> um, I wrote, a like, you're getting like a kiss from the Lord of the Underworld, um, of guidance, and then later in my note, I wrote like a, like a blessing. <laughs> um, but I don't know why the word kiss came up a couple times. It's just like, so kind of like a, a touch, a blessing, like a, um, a really a blessing, but like a, a connection with the Lord of the underworld. Um, to fear not as you go into the darkness, um, which is simply your own shadow world. 
um, the temptation to blame or project or scapegoat is simply a distraction that's just trying to make you avoid the uncomfortable, roiling, churning disruption and often eruption of your internal landscape. Um, but this is an awesome opportunity to go actively and consciously into the volcanic internal process as it is developing. So you're not just waiting for the volcano to cool down and the lava to cool and then just accept the geographic modifications that you're left with. Um, and you're not controlling this process or trying to, but actively participating in the unfurling and opening to the unknown and yet unthought of possibilities. So being alive and active in this process. Um, Saturn is the dispositor of both um, Capricorn and Uranus, <laughs> and Aquarius, excuse me, and Saturn's in Aquarius. And Saturn and Uranus are still square. They were exact on the 23rd, their last exact square of the year. So these two energies are also blessing or kissing this new moon energy of foundations and going into the shakeup. And, and wherever you are in the process of this shakeup, where you, um, maybe it's just a thought in your mind of something that needs to, to change, or maybe something has already changed or you, everything's blown apart and you're putting the pieces back. Um, it's just that this energy of restructuring and um, the insight that is necessary to make it um, the right change for you, um, you're being supported, okay. Um, and not a reminder, not everyone is okay with the process of change and transformation, and that is all right. Okay, so there may be people in your life or um, personally or even collectively um, that resists change, um, and just don't let that hamper your enthusiasm for it. Um, don't let it um, dampen your light or hinder your process and progress. Um, and also be kind to yourself as you explore the underworld. So this is um, big work and it takes all the compassion and acceptance that you can muster for yourself, but uh, connecting um, with what is alive within you, all of it, the whole symphony of experiences is where you find your resonance and where you find perhaps a new melody that you'd like to sing into being for this new year. So that's my little run through for the new moon in Capricorn. And I do have a deck of cards here. I'm just gonna pull one and see what comes up. Just thought it'd be kind of fun. So I'm using the Oracle of the Seven Energies deck by Colette Baron reed probably pulled from these before. Um, we'll just, just pull one card, see what comes up. Just something kind of fun and different. And we'll see what happens. Okay, I think I'm just gonna pull one. Nothing's popping out. Let's do this one. Spirit of Gratitude. Love the artwork. Uh, the light's a little weird. Anyway, spirit of gratitude. All right, number 43. Key concepts, the prosper, <laughs> prospering power of prayer, communication with the divine, expressing deep gratitude as you move through the world, knowing that your prayers will be answered exactly as they are meant to be. And that's a great word as we move through and into transformation. Um, all right, I think I got it there. In prayer, we connect directly to our higher power. It is a way for us to be in communion with the divine, a reminder that our lives are a sacred conversation we are continuously engaged in. Prayer lets us know we are not alone. A power greater than ourselves acts on our behalf and is activated through us 
suffusing our hearts and minds with a faith that is life-affirming, loving, and compassionate. When we pray, we acknowledge that we are only part of the equation of life, that a spiritual aspect is always in operation. We engage in humility, knowing we are in a co-creative partnership and have so much to be grateful for. Expressing gratitude and asking to be of service is the most powerful, prospering prayer of all. When you focus your attention on appreciation for even the smallest aspects of your life and what you have already experienced, it's like waving a magic wand. Everything you need comes to you without effort, obstacles fall away, and your purpose becomes even clearer. The kind of prayer that will prosper um, you and others today is one of a deep, abiding gratitude. You become a magnet for miracles when you are grateful and ask to be a channel for divine purpose, divine abundance and love and compassion. The power of source is within you, and now is the time to awaken it. All right. Thank you for joining me, and happy new moon and happy new year.